butchers won't agree on the best cut of meat. Yeah, beef is my favorite. But they all know that one steak is the most important. It's a ribeye, rib roast. This is where you get the prime rib from. This cut here is the cut that determines the quality grade for the whole carcass. The red part of the steak gives us the protein, but the flavor? The marbling is what we're looking for, is these little flecks of fat right in here. Fat fat's gonna render down and essentially self-baste this meat while it's cooking. Caleb Center runs the butcher shop on campus at the University of California, Davis. You can buy a steak there. It's also a science lab that's done decades of research helping ranchers to raise better beef. Now it's helping with a new problem. Can we grow real beef without the cow? The meat of the future could be in here. These vials contain cow stem cells, painstakingly harvested from the meat lab. For cultivated meat, what you're doing is you're taking stem cells from a, a cow or another animal, and you're growing them in here um, in a very controlled environment. David Block is the food science professor running UC Davis's network of scientists collaborating on alternative meat. He knows wine, which is good, because the big steel tanks you see fermenting grapes? Maybe this tank would have muscle cells and this tank would have fat cells. The idea is to grow animal cells in there, similar to how we grow yeast cells to make alcohol now. And the stakes are high. The world's population is growing. People in developing countries are developing more of an appetite for meat. Humanity is on track for a meat shortage. The projections are that the world will need somewhere between 25 and 100% more meat by 2050. That's a huge amount more production. But planet Earth isn't going to suddenly have more land to raise that many meat animals. There won't be enough supply to meet demand in the next 25 years um, if we don't do anything. You're basically saying it's an imperative. We have to do this at some level. We have to do something. So if we're going to grow meat in tanks, we're gonna need a bigger tank. For cultivating meat production, we'll be about 100 to 150 times larger than this. What they're trying to do in a big metal vat normally happens inside of an animal. It's not just a matter of bringing together a bunch of muscle fibers and Bob's your uncle, you've got a steak. So much is happening to make the muscles of this animal that even the people who are working on cultivated meat are skeptical it can even be done. I don't want to be over optimistic. We are really trying to replicate in the lab something that nature took thousands of years to perfect. Anna Denikol is an animal scientist. It's such a big problem and it, there's so many angles to it. Lucas Smith studies medicine. His lab runs clinical trials for muscular dystrophy. Hers research to help breed and raise livestock. Both professors' labs are already making real cow muscle, beef, from different kinds of stem cells. What we can do now, we can take a cell and make a muscle cell, but that's at the microscopic level. The microscope reveals what happens when they add the right ingredients to mimic the animal's body signals. The stem cells convert to muscle cells. They even start shaping into fibers. Still much too small though to make a steak. An actual muscle fiber has hundreds of former cells that have merged together to form these long giant cells that are packed with protein. If scientists can grow longer muscle cells, also fat cells and connective tissue cells, they might be able to mix it into a lab-grown real beef burger and someday, perhaps with special molds or 3D printers, make you a perfectly marbled steak. But will you ever actually see it in your grocery store? And what's it gonna take to get there? We already have more meat alternatives than ever, but almost all of it's made with plants. We've got wheat, gluten, soy protein. Cultured beef may not be an ingredient you see listed for a while. 10, 15 years out, maybe 20 years out. So in the interim, I think there needs to be other approaches. 
other approaches are already swirling. These are high protein food. This food is made of mycoprotein, fungus that humans have eaten for thousands of years. Professor Rei Hong Jung and her students made it more nutritious and shaped it into new forms. We can add the natural colors, uh, natural flavors uh, into fungi to make uh, different products. Powder jerky. And because they can make it round... Right now this is the most expensive caviar in the world because it's made by PhDs. Cultured caviar, made by a startup that licensed the technology. Are you ready? Yeah, I, I, how does one get ready? <laughs> <laughs> the eggs look real, modeled on local white sturgeon caviar. All right, cheers. Cheers. I found it soft, creamy, slightly slimy, and not too salty. I would not guess that it wasn't fish eggs. Yeah, yeah, well that's that's exactly the intent. This product launches later this year at about the same price as real caviar. Not bad considering it's made by feeding the fungus leftover almond hulls, farm waste. That's the kind of idea it's gonna take to make the cultured meat actually work. We wanna produce protein rich foods that everyone can afford. The most expensive part of growing meat is making the liquid soup the animal cells grow in. They're using purified, special proteins to make the animal cells divide and change. The mix of nutrients comes from the pharmaceutical industry. Filling a big metal tank with the ingredients they're using now would grow meat that nobody could afford. We can't have, you know, a $5,000 hamburger. They'll need to keep developing the technology until they can make cultured meat for prices similar to or even cheaper than real meat. And if they do, we'll still have big questions. Could it be halal? Could it be kosher? I'm not sure I want to discuss that on camera, but I will say that I've heard that several rabbis have already decided that something like lobster that wasn't kosher to begin with will still not be kosher. Is it vegan? I've had vegan students who uh, said that they would try it. We could potentially have actual meat that is slaughter-free. Yes. Assuming that the initial cells came from a biopsy, then it could be slaughter-free. Even if slaughter-free meat comes to the masses, one thing's clear. The scientists are gonna need help from the humanities to get people eating it. People aren't going to stop wanting a real steak anytime soon. Well, I can speak for myself. I won't. <laughs> <laughs>